Good evening, uh, distinguished guests, uh, family members, friends. Uh, my name is Matthew Stroop, and I am privileged to be a part of this year's Military Public Affairs Cohort. Um, it, it's my honor to be here tonight with uh, Lieutenant Commander Ryan Vera, Lieutenant Phil Chitty, and uh, Lieutenant Jamie Seibel, who is actually here in spirit. You may not see her. Her and her uh, husband, uh, Dave, had a little girl this past weekend, and so uh, she's not able to be here. Selfishly, we would love it if she was here uh, because she was such an integral part of our team, but alas, she is not. So we're really excited to share uh, the results of our study with you tonight uh, on the relationship between journalists and PR practitioners. Uh, we know from our own experience and from the literature that uh, media relations is a very, very important part of what public affairs officers and PR practitioners do. Uh, and if we peel that back just a little bit, media and relations, uh, relations are probably a good portion of what that's all about. Uh, so relationships uh, do matter. And so we used uh, Luddingham's relationship theory uh, as a basis for our research. And what we found, uh, we, we, it resulted in quantitative uh, results uh, that supported qualitative observations from previous research. Uh, now, in public relations scholarship, uh, in order to measure uh, or to quantify a relationship uh, between an organization and its public, they use this really cool thing called Organization Public Relations, uh, or OPR. Uh, and so what we used was an abbreviated scale uh, of OPR that was recently published by Sweetser and Kelleher and Keller, uh, as well as uh, previous scales by Rollins and Sallet uh, in order to answer two important questions. One, uh, does the institutional affiliation of a PR practitioner have an impact on their relationship with journalists? And two, uh, what are things that a PR practitioner can do in order to build a good relationship with a journalist rooted in social science and in quantitative uh, results? And so to tell you how we do that, or, or how that turned out, I'll turn it over to Phil. Thanks, Matthew. So the question we had and the challenge we had going forward with this research was, how do we operationalize and define a relationship? Think about that. How, how do we do that? Uh, so what we did is we took the work from Sweetser and Kelleher, uh, and we, her scale was a communicative strategy scale. So we took communicative strategies as our operational definition of a relationship. And so Sweetser and Kelleher broke it down into communicated commitment and conversational voice as communicative strategies. So that was going to be our operational definition of a relationship. And so to measure that, we used the 11-item uh, scale, which asked questions like, this PR practitioner enjoys communication, this PR implies a long-term relationship in communications, and so on and so forth. So the 11 questions in that scale total. And so that measures, operationally measures the relationship. So let's talk a little bit about the survey itself. So we were able to get 152 journalists to fill out the survey in size 152, which is comparable to other studies done on assessing journalists' uh, perceptions. We were able to do this by, um, through an online survey, through Qualtrics. We were able to um, uh, em deploy the survey through Qualtrics, but also using um, organizations, contacts. Uh, we used the Society of Professional Journalists. We also used Chinfo, Navy, uh, news outlets as well in order to get the survey out to journalists. Uh, special shout out to Chinfo and all the Navy PAOs and the SPJ for helping us get out the survey. So some of you I know are sitting in the audience. Thank you. Now, we deployed the survey to journalists. Uh, we were able to get 152 respondents. Uh, a little bit of statistics on the survey results itself. So we, our survey was a non-random purposive sample, which means that we were um, out surveying journalists and we were trying to get as many respondents as possible. So while not random, we have uh, a very good generalization of what the uh, perceptions of journalists are in the, um, what the perceptions of journalists are of PR practitioners, excuse me. So we, uh, the average age of respondents was 45 years old. Uh, the average years of experience in the media was 19. So uh, these journalists that we surveyed 
are experienced, and then the average number of PR practitioners that they had worked with in the 90 preceding days was 25. So our respondents are very well versed and very, um, very able to work and very comfortable working with PR practitioners. So their perceptions and the answers that they provided are a good indication of what a journalist really thinks about PR practitioners. So what we did is we randomly assigned them to one of four cells. So we divided all PR practitioners into three different types, for-profit, non-profit, and then government and military PR practitioners. The fourth cell was a control, uh, like a control, that where we asked respondents to evaluate a practitioner from any organization, and we used it as a means of comparison. So that's a brief layout of what the survey said and what the survey, um, how the survey process went for us. So let's talk about results, 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 results. What we found was that the organization, the type of organization a PR practitioner represents, does not have a statistically significant impact on the PR practitioner's perception of practitioners. So basically, communicated commitment and conversational voice did not vary with the type of organization the PR practitioner represented. Neither did general perceptions of the practitioner. So this led us to believe our, our next research question as to if the organization doesn't matter, then what does? What operationally does matter in the relationship? And this led us to answer our next research question. Uh, so to statistically, we did a regression analysis and we asked ourselves, what are the predictive factors of communicated commitment and conversational voice? So for communi communicative commitment, the factors were two-way candid communication and then information accessibility. And then for conversational voice, we found out that, again, candid two-way communication was a predictive factor. Also, information quality was a factor for conversational voice. And very interestingly, perceptions, general perceptions of the PR practitioner factored in to creating a uh, mo more positive conversational voice. Now, all these, uh, for communicated commitment and conversational voice, uh, these correlations were very strongly correlated on the order of 0.8 and above. And to discuss the implications, I'm gonna turn it over to Ryan. Thanks, Bill. We sought to um, find out how practitioners' uh, organizational affiliation had an impact on their relationship with the media. Our data showed that the media doesn't actually take into account the organization a PR practitioner works for, contrary to previous assertions by scholars. We did see some trends in a difference between um, government and military and for-profit practitioners. From the journalist perspective, for-profit practitioners had a little bit more candid two-way conversation and information accessibility. However, these results were not statistically significant, but they do warrant further research. Uh, on the other hand, we did find that regardless of a practitioner's affiliation, his or her perceived commitment to a relationship by journalists uh, resulted from a, um, uh, from two things. One being um, uh, what do you call it? their uh, their three communication. Yeah, how much? Uh, <laughs> uh, how much access they gave the media in terms of interviews, information, and the like, uh, as well as having genuine, impartial conversations uh, that include listening just as much as talking. Right? And aside from these uh, candid conversations. Uh, in addition to them, we found that a combination of, the, of that plus the quality of information as well as the overall perception of the journalist, uh, that actually had to say in, and it kind of predicted how well a practitioner communicates. Right? So, you know, we talk a lot about relationships in a line of work, usually even uh, before we go to DINFOS for, um, for formal training. Um, but as you can see, our theory-driven uh, quantitative uh, research provides all PAOs the confidence to know that what we learn and what we do uh, is supported by uh, rigorous scholarship. So uh, our commitment to uh, journalists, uh, growing with them, uh, learning with them, having conversations with them, uh, all of that really does matter. We thank you for your time and look forward to your questions.